This is the Fearless Agent Podcast, where you learn how to make way more money fast selling real estate with your host, the fearless agent himself, Bob Leffler. Hey, everybody. This is Bob here at the Fearless Agent Podcast for real estate sales professionals like you, where we explain that everything you've been taught by the real estate industry is wrong, and you will make lots more money in way less time by doing the exact opposite. Now, today's topic is the product. Let's say that you and I went into a car dealership and uh, we were going to buy a new car. So I don't care what car dealership you go to. uh, New cars are amazing. I just bought a new car not all that long ago. Amazing. Lots of technology, that new car smell. It's all rubbery smelling. It's all wonderful. And, uh, you know, they never break down. They never need a tune-up. It's, it's uh, any brand of car is amazing these days. Now, that's the product, right? So um, what is the process like of buying a new car? Oh, that's right. It's torture, right? They, they put you in that little room and grind you and high pressure you. And then you have that rectal exam that is the credit check and all that is just an absolute nightmare. Okay. Well, let's see. Is there any industry that has a worse process than, uh, oh, that's right. Our industry, real estate has an even worse process. Yeah. I hang a lockbox on your door so people can come any any day of the week, any hour of the day, make fun of how you decorate and how you never clean your house. And then, uh, you know, we beat you down on the price and we make you pay 7%. And, you know, it's a, it's a nightmare. So here's the good news. Your competitors who are non-fearless agents, they're selling the process. You, if you sell the product, you're going to make way, way more money. And again, the only goal of the Fearless Agent podcast, the only goal of Fearless Agent coaching for realtors is to have you earning at least an extra one hundred dollars to $200,000 in the next 12 months. So knowing the difference between the product and the process is the secret to that. So what is the product? The product is your house selling for tens of thousands of extra dollars, more than it's worth, more than any other agent could get you, net after all the expenses are paid. So here's the question. If I could do that, if that's the magic trick I can do, and I can get you tens of thousands of extra dollars for your house, net after all the expenses are paid, more than any other agent ever could, and that won't be hard, Uh, would you want me to, or are you allergic to money? You see, nobody's going to get that question wrong. So just remember not to focus on the process. So in the Fearless Agent Listing presentation or any of the presentations, and there's five, there's a listing presentation, pricing presentation, buyer presentation, for sale by owner presentation, and investor presentation. We're never talking about the process. We're only talking about the product. So when we're prospecting on the telephone, it's the same thing. When we're face-to-face, uh, what, are, what are the secrets to doing the telephone prospecting correctly? Now, when you're, when you're calling for sale by owners or you're calling expired listings, which it added together makes up probably 8% of the market out there, the other 90% of the market or your sphere. If you took all the uh, houses that sell in uh, your town last year, what percentage of them were ever for sale by owner or were ever expired with another agent? It's probably about 8%. So 90% of the business is going to come from cold calling if you're willing to do that. But that's where the money is. And by the way, if I cold called every house in your town, I would bump into every FISBO and expired anyway, wouldn't I? So it's just common sense. So when people do prospecting on the telephone, when they come to me 
for coaching. They've always been coached either directly through all these other coaches that don't know how to do sales or by the industry in general, which gets it from those coaches. And the words are horrific. So here's, here's the basics of telephone prospecting, okay? Let's say you call somebody and uh, you say, I, I was just calling, hi, my name is Bob Leffler. I'm with ABC Realty. And I was just calling to see if you might be thinking of selling your house. Okay. Now, most of the time, they're going to say no. Okay. And then I would follow that up with, uh, do you have any plans of moving ever? So when I first started cold calling, uh, I would just I would not say that second question. I would say, hi, my name is Bob Leffler. I'm with ABC Realty. I was just calling to see if you might be thinking of selling your house. And they'd say no. And I'd say, OK, well, thank you very much for your time. And I'm quickly on to the next one, which is great. And one day I called this guy and I said, I was just calling to see if you might be thinking of selling your house. And he said, uh, no. And I said, well, have you do you have any plans of moving ever? And he says, well, yeah, but not for like eight months. And I'm going, eight months? Holy cow, it's an emergency, right? So I realized I was missing out on some. I guess these people thought I meant today or, you know, this week or something. So always follow it up with uh, any plans of moving ever. So if they say yes, what is the first question that every other coach tells you to ask? And, of course, it's when. Right. Well, when can I make money off of you? Because it's all about me. Right. The realtor. It's all about the realtor. When can I make money off of you? Now, think if you were at a party and, you know, you've got some uh, friends of yours and they say, oh, we're selling our house and moving. Well, the first question you would ask would never be when if you like them. It would be where. Are you moving to, right? Are we, are we gonna, never going to see each other again? So if you care about people, you're going to ask the question, when, when, not when, but where are you moving to? So uh, start with that. Now, where are you moving to could be 10 or 15 questions, depending on their situation. So the reason fearless agents are so much better at sales than non-fearless agents the reason my coaching students are able to book five listing appointments a week, no problem. The reason they're able to get higher commissions, longer term listing agreements. The reason they're, they're able to get the seller to beg them to underprice their house every time is because the seller is sold on two things. They know that no, in fact, if the seller is sold on these two things with you, you will never lose a listing. When the seller knows that no other agent will ever care more about them than you do, and when the seller knows that no other agent will care more about their money than you do, then you're never going to lose a listing. So how does that happen? Well, it doesn't happen with when are you moving. It happens in the question where. And again, where could be 10 or 15 questions. So you say, yeah, I'm thinking about we are, we are moving. Okay, where are you moving to? All right, so they say where, wherever it is. Now, where are you moving to, honestly, could be none of my business. That is possible. Uh, maybe some people have a moving story that is unpleasant, embarrassing, or creepy. For example, if they're going through a divorce, they lost their job, uh, you know, they don't want to talk about where. Maybe they don't even know where if they're getting a divorce and, they, you know, one of them doesn't even know where they're going. Um, but they know they're moving. So where m might not be any of my business. But if it is my business, then we're going to have a little chat about that because it's going to let them know that I care more about them. So where are you moving to? They say, oh, we're moving to Irvine, California. Okay. Uh, are you going to rent when you get there or are you going to buy? So please write that down. Rent or buy. Is it going to be a condo or is it going to be a house? Is it going to be bigger or is it going to be smaller than this one? 
that you're in now. Is it going to be more expensive or is it going to be less expensive than the one you're in now? So here's the reasons for those questions. They say, yeah, we're going to, we're going to buy. Oh, is it going to be a condo or is it going to be a house? No, it's going to be a house. Is it going to be bigger than the one you're in or is it going to be smaller? Well, it's going to be, it's probably going to be smaller than the one we're in. Is it important to you that it is smaller or if it was bigger, would it be okay? Well, if it was bigger, I guess it would be okay, but I think it's probably going to be smaller. Is it going to be more expensive or less expensive than the one you're in? No, it's going to be more expensive. Ding, ding, ding. I just found the money problem. So here's a little rule of thumb. No one is going to pay you an, a percentage to sell their house that rhymes with heaven and is not 11. No one is going to list with you for one year. No one is going to beg you to underprice their house. No one is going to do business with you unless they have a problem that you can solve. So here are the problems you're looking for. You can write these down. They really need to have a money problem. Or they have a time problem. Or they have a distance problem. I'm driving too far from work, which is a money problem too, by the way when you're wearing out your car like crazy and you're, um, you know, any of that. Uh, they have a health problem. Uh, I'm old and I can no longer walk up and down stairs. Or they're like me. I'm not that old, but I am lazy and I'm not willing to work up, walk up and down stairs. Uh, I have a uh, relationship problem, which, of course, leads to legal problems which of course leads to money problems. So if they don't have some sort of a problem, then they're probably not a real seller. They're, they're, because nobody's going to move unless they have to. So when you're booking listing appointments like fearless agents do and you're booking five a week, I want all five of them to be people that have to move. Not I'd like to move. We're thinking about moving. No, we're moving. Okay. It's happening. That's happening because we've got a problem. So once they, once they say, yeah, it's going to be more expensive or they say, no, it's going to be less expensive, then I would say, well, is it important to you that it is less expensive or would you be okay if it was significantly more expensive? No, no, we need it to be less expensive. Ding, ding, ding. I found the money problem. Okay. And sometimes people will chit chat and but I'm not a chit chatter. I'm going to be focused because I'm in sales on looking for the problem. They can do the chit chat, but I'm not participating in that. I'm going to get them back on track. So those are the questions I'm going to be asking under the heading of where are you moving to? Then I'm going to sell them on the product. Okay. So with that in mind, if I have an amazing strategy, which I do, and no other agent has it, and you, you and I both know they don't, and it would 1,000% guarantee you that the buyer would grossly overpay for your house, and they'd be happy they did, uh, and you would end up with tens of thousands. In some cases, in some price ranges, it could be hundreds of thousands, but it would be tens of thousands of extra dollars, again, that you don't deserve. It's more than your house is worth more than any other agent could get you, and this is net after all the expenses are paid, would that help your cause financially or are you allergic to money? No, Bob, we're not allergic to money. Okay. So would it be fair to say that what you don't want to do, what you would want to avoid, is what all the other agents do, and I know you know what they do. They care very much about the buyer. In fact, you can go to their website, and the first thing you see is search for home. So that's how you'll know they only care about the buyer. They care about being fair and you being realistic on your price and all that kind of baloney, and that's how you lose tens of thousands of dollars. So is it fair to say losing tens of thousands of dollars by doing what all the other agents do is what you would want to avoid? Yes, Bob, we want to avoid that. Now I've crushed my competitors. So first I sell them on the product, then I crush the competitors, and now 
I'm going to resell them on the product. So again, if I'm able to sell your house for way more than it's worth, you end up with a bunch, bunch of extra money net. You're not going to be offended when I do that. Is that correct? Yes, Bob. That's correct. Okay. Well, when is the soonest, with that in mind, that you would be willing to open up your hand and let me plunk the tens of thousands of extra dollars into your hand, and that would coincide with moving day, probably. And they'd say, oh, uh, immediately, or, uh, well, we have to do this, and it would be a number of weeks, or it would be a couple of months, or uh, that kind of thing. So that's when you do when. After they're sold on the product, after you've crushed your competitors, after you've resold them on the product and they know why you're the person, you're the agent for them, only then do you ne need to worry about when. And when, make sure you write this down, when doesn't mean thinking about it day. It doesn't mean uh, listing it day. It means moving day, okay? When is moving day going to be? So if they say, well, we were thinking about putting it on the market in the spring, I say, okay, well, that's, that's not what I asked you. Here's what I'm asking you. I'm going to plunk the tens of thousands of dollars extra in your hand, and that does coincide with moving day. So when is the soonest, and I'm not trying to rush you because it doesn't matter to me. I'll be ready when you're ready. But when is the soonest moving day? That means your house and all this furniture and stuff is gone. You and your furniture is gone and you're living in the next place. When is the soonest, realistically, that moving day like that would ever happen? So they let's say they say, uh, you know, two months. Okay, here's what I'd like to do. Okay, here's what I'm proposing. I'd like to find a time. When we could get together, I'll show you how I get your house sold for way more than it's worth. And I like to meet with people in the afternoons or the evenings. Do you guys have nine to five jobs? They say, yes, we do. Okay, well, I've got next Thursday uh, at uh, 7 p.m. available, or would the following Monday be better? Okay, so that's how you do it. That's how fearless agents all schedule listing appointments. That's how you schedule five listing appointments a week. Getting to go is the secret to being a fearless agent because when you do go, you could be not that great and you're just going to hit it off with people. But the great agents that earn their full worth in real estate, it's because they get to go. They're not missing out on scheduling appointments that other people are getting to go on. Now, if they say, oh, well, we'd have to, you know, it's probably going to be eight months, then here's, here's the question. So, by the way, just, just write this down. It's where, which could be 10 questions, when, and let's get together, okay? Where, when, let's get together. Now, if that doesn't work because they're going to wait, then, you, you know, the secret to sales really is it's just this simple. You know, when I was taught by all the other coaches in the industry and, and the industry itself just has all this baloney, it's just uh, poisonous, bad, uh, it's always about objection handling, okay? Objection handling is for people who really stink at sales. If you're getting objections, then you know you're doing something wrong, okay? You know, there, no way should you be objection handling, okay? You're asking the wrong questions the wrong way, and then you get bad answers, and then you have to do objection handling. So the secret to sales is you have an elaborate setup that leads to one magic question that has no wrong answer, and you already know the answer. So when somebody says, uh, well, we have to – it's not going to be for about eight months probably, okay? Now, again, I'm not trying to get them to do it sooner. I'm trying to get them to not lose money, okay? Because by waiting eight months, in most cases, most people will lose money. And we realtors know that. 
But it's very rare that by doing it quicker, you don't make more money. You lose money by waiting, typically. So if so, here's the magic question. When they say, yeah, we're eh, probably going to be eight months, you say, well, if you knew for certain that by waiting just eight months that you would end up losing tens of thousands of dollars, would you have to wait? Well, gee, Bob, how in the world would I lose tens of thousands of dollars by waiting eight months? Well, it wouldn't matter if you have to wait. Do you have to wait? Well, no, we don't have to wait. Now, what I did there is called what every fearless agent does. Once we ask a question, we get our question answered before we ever move on to the next thing. So when they say, well, how in the world would I lose uh, tens of thousands of dollars by waiting, the untrained normal agent would say, well, I don't know if you know this or not, but blah, 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 or statistics show, or blah, 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 and that's, that's a disaster. And that, that does not lead to appointment town. That does not lead to commission town, believe me. So it wouldn't matter if you have to wait. Do you have to wait? Well, no, we wouldn't have to wait. Okay. Well, with that in mind, to avoid losing tens of thousands of dollars, um, you know, what's the soonest you would move up your plans, realistically? And then we're going to book the appointment. Now, by the way, if any of this makes sense to you, uh, if you are earning less selling real estate than you wish you were, and you are open to the idea of having some help with that, if you would like to learn more, I just want you guys to know that you can call me anytime you can call me on my cell phone at 480-385-8810. That is my cell phone. And let's just see if you and what you're trying to do and what we do here at Fearless Agent Coaching, if it would even be a good fit. So again, 480-385-8810. By the way, when you call me, you're not going to get any, I'm not going to close you. There's not going to be any high pressure. All we want to do is help you get rich selling real estate. That's what we do. And I love talking to realtors. Please don't think you're bothering me. I don't have anything better to do than to make you rich. So don't email me. Don't text me. Salespeople call, okay? The phone is where sales happen. So I, I practice what I preach. So don't email, don't text. Always call me at 480 480- 385-8810. If for some reason you cannot afford coaching, but you wish you could, uh, please visit fearlessagent.com, watch the webinar. It's 45 minutes long. Take lots of notes. Go to the video training page. And here's my guarantee to you. Those free videos will be better coaching for free than you would pay any other coach in America any amount of money for. And if you ever have a question, you can always call me because we want to help you for free so you can afford our coaching as soon as possible. So we are here for you. So it's 480-385-8810 and, uh, and go to fearlessagent.com anytime. So if you're, if you're booking appointments on the phone uh, and they do have to wait, they say, oh no, oh, no, we have to wait. Okay, when should I check back with you? All right, so please write that down. When should I check back with you? So let's say they say, ah, you know, call me, why don't you call me in six months? Now cut that in half and call them back in three months, okay? If they said call me in eight months, you cut that in half, that would be four months. I would always call them in three months is the longest I would ever go without following up with them, okay? So cold calling is about follow-up. Now, for sale by owners and expired listings, fearless agent coaching students, they never follow up with for sale by owners or expires because they always get the appointment booked on the very first call. Why is that? Because they always get their question answered and they're not asking stupid questions, honestly. So if you can't book the appointment on the very first call, then uh, on, with a for sale by owner or an expired, don't call them back. If you're a fearless agent, you wouldn't need to. If, if you're uh, cold calling, 
that is about follow-up. So the right now money in real estate, I want to tell you where the right now money comes from. So please write these down. Right now money comes from calling your sphere of influence asking for referrals. Right now money comes from calling for sale by owners. Right now money, the money you need to make right now is going to come from calling expired and canceled listings. Right now money happens when you're cold calling. It happens on follow-up calls from previous cold calling. Right now money happens in open houses. Okay, So if you want to make right now money, you do all those things. Here's the funny thing, though. The future, your whole future, will be built on only two of those things. And that would be cold calling and your sphere. That's where the future is built. There's no future in FISBOs. There's right now, but there's no future. So if you want to have a profitable right now and a very bright future, you're going to want to do all of those things. So this is the order that I would – every fearless agent does them in this order. Let's put it that way. If you're a fearless agent coaching student, you're doing this order. So at 9 a.m., you're on the phone and you start calling your sphere of influence. Then you're going – so that's probably – let's say you have 100 people in your sphere. So you don't want to bug these people too often asking for referrals. So realistically – uh, you're going to call them, uh, let's say, three times a year, I think would be plenty. So that would be 300 calls a year if you have 100 in your sphere. So that's probably about one call a day at the most, okay? So then you'd go to any new for sale by owners next. How many new for sale by owners? You're not calling old stale FISBOs. You're not following up with FISBOs ever. So it's drive-by shooting, one, one time, one, one shot. That's all they get. So there's probably, you know, maybe two, zero, three, six a day. Uh, then you go to any new expireds or canceled. How many of those could there be on average in a day? Maybe eight or 10 or maybe 15. So maybe you've burned up an hour uh, at the most. Then you're going to go to any follow-up calls from previous cold calling, and that's where the real money gets made. And then you just want to spend the rest, as many hours as you possibly can, on the phone cold calling to fill that pipeline for future follow-up calls, where, again, is where the real big money gets made in the future. So when you're doing that, you end with, when should I check back with you? You cut that in half. And then uh, you take it from there. So again, the where are you moving to? It's 10 questions. It's 15 questions, depending on their situation. And think about every everybody's different. Some people are old people. They're moving to an old folks' home. So they're not buying. They're renting. Some people are buying. Some people are renting. Some people, it's, you know, you're going to help them buy the next house. Some people are moving out of town. So it's all different for everybody. The secret to success in telephone prospecting is to have the what I call the fearless agent mindset. Okay, so here's, here's what I call the fearless agent mindset. And please do write this down. I don't care what they think. Okay? I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do. That is their business. What they think, what they say, what they do, honestly, it's none of my business. What's my business is what I say and what I think and what I do. That I care very much about. So if I care what I say and what I think and what I do, I'm not going to be saying a bunch of dumb things that don't lead to appointments getting scheduled. You know, I would say 20 percent of my coaching students are trapped in some other coaching program where they're being taught to say poisonous things that uh, don't lead to appointments getting scheduled. So the first thing we work on is getting all of that junk out of their head and they get disciplined right away. So when you come to me, uh, I know you got a problem. Most people have a money problem. But you know what? Some of the people who come to me, they have a time problem. 
So, um, for example, yesterday I was talking to a guy. He did 168 transac transactions in the last year, but he did them at too low a commission. So if he had, if he had been a fearless agent, he could have done um, about 100 transactions and made the same amount of money. Uh, or he would have done the same number of transactions, 168, and made between 30 and 50 percent more money. So just by getting your head right on that, he had too many people on the team, so he was running around managing people. He should have had just him and one assistant. So if you have you alone, and, and, and again, I coach different types of uh, business models. So I coach big teams, small teams, um, husband, wife, 50-50 partnerships or like two sisters or a guy and a gal or, you know, mother, daughter, that kind of thing, 50-50s, uh, or an ex one agent with an executive assistant or just a single agent. If you're a single agent, you should be able to do 40 in the next 12 months. But somewhere along the line, when you're scheduling five listing appointments a week, then you can afford an assistant. The minute you're routinely scheduling five a week, you can afford an assistant. Then you don't have to do all the stuff that you don't want to do. And, and the most profitable of all those business arrangements are the 50-50 partnership or the husband-wife partnership. The second most profitable of all those business arrangements is the executive assistant with the agent. The third most profitable is the single, and, and I'm assuming that all these business models are equally productive, okay, hardworking, let's say it that way. Uh, last is the big team. The big teams make the least amount of money, small team, not quite as bad, but single agent with a partner, single agent with an executive assistant, single agent by themselves, they always make more money than any size team. And I've never seen an, an exception to that. So the secret to that is getting the mindset right. The people on the big teams, they generally don't have their mindset right. And they're not taking weekends off either. So again, I don't care what they say. I don't care what they think. I don't care what they do, the customer that is. And I'm not going out of my way to offend them or anything, but I just don't care what they say, what they think, or what they do because it isn't any of my business. That is their business. My business is what I think and what I say and what I do and being disciplined about it. So let's just talk about what I call the listing factory, okay? The listing factory is you call and you try and schedule an appointment. If you don't schedule the appointment, you say, when should I check back with you, okay? They say, check back with me in X number of months. You cut it in half. You follow up. You send them a thank you note with a couple of business cards. You make that follow-up call. You try to book the appointment. You say, when should I check back with you if you can't? And you rinse and you repeat. And that literally is what we do for a living. So it'll never be more complicated. If you're a fearless agent, it's never going to be more complicated than that. You don't have to, you don't have to think about all kinds of, of uh, complicated stuff. So it's the telephone. It's you with the fearless agent mindset. It's you with the fearless agent words. It's you with the five fearless agent presentations. It's a listing presentation, uh, pricing presentation, for sale by owner, buyer, investor, and then we teach you how to present offers in a way that nobody else does, and we teach you how to uh, negotiate in a way that no one else can. So once you've learned all that, those disciplines, and you have the right words to say on the phone, and you get every bit of that poisonous junk out of your head that they've taught you in the real estate industry, and you get your schedule right, and every day looks the same, then you've got this step-by-step -step plan that we give you that just every day is the same. It's very comforting. So once again, we want to thank you for joining us today. Please do visit us at fearlessagent.com. You can always call me directly on my cell phone at 480-385-8810. You can visit us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, 
uh, the local coffee shop, the dry cleaners, everywhere you look, we're there. And until next week, just remember, always do what fearless agents do. Always have fun, be humble, but most of all, be fearless. Oh.